Hi, my name is Laura Mai. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to tell you about how I started a podcast and how you can do the same. By the end of this video, you should know why you want to start a podcast, the software that you should be using to record your podcast, how to reach out to guests, how to communicate with guests, how to film, how to edit, how to upload, how to promote your podcast on social media, and how to use paid ads if you want to. Throughout this video, I will be talking about different stuff and it'll all be linked in the down bar. I've created different templates for you and I hope that this video helps you feel confident to post your first podcast episode and makes it less scary. So without further ado, let's get into it. First step, you need to know why you want to create a podcast. And the reason for this is it'll inform where your energy should go in terms of research and planning. So there are kind of three main reasons why I think that someone should start a podcast. The first one is just for fun, and that's totally fine. You just want to start a podcast. You just want to talk about stuff that you already like. And you've already got a community. Great reason to start a podcast. The second reason is you have an audience and they want you to start a podcast around something. Also a good reason to start a podcast. The third reason is for business development, and that's why I started a podcast. I didn't even realize I was doing this until I went on to an Evan Carmichael video. He had this free, like put in your email, get something free, like a lead magnet sort of vibe. So I did it, I watched the video and he said something along the lines of, start a business development podcast because everyone wants to tell their stories and you'll get people who you never would have talked to otherwise talking to you because they want to tell their story on your podcast. And you know what? <laughs> this guy was right. I didn't realize I was doing it, but I had already been doing that in my podcast and it's a really great reason to start a podcast. So once you decide whether you wanna start a podcast because it's fun, because your audience already wants you to, or for business development. So if you've chosen one of the first two options and you just want to do your podcast solo, you can skip this part of the video. But if you've chosen one of the first two options or the third option and you do wanna have guests on your podcast, then make sure that you watch this next section. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is how you reach out to guests in the first place. And there are two ways that you can do this. You can either do this using cold outreach or warm outreach. And that's people you don't know or people you do know. So I would recommend doing more cold outreach than warm outreach just because the people you already know, if this is for business development, you wanna be meeting people that are new and that are gonna introduce new things into your life. But that being said, if there is someone in your network who you kind of know and that you want to have a conversation with, but you haven't been making time for each other, this could be a really good excuse to finally do that. In terms of actually reaching out to people that I don't know, the best way that I found to do that is either Instagram threads or LinkedIn, but whatever channel you use is fine. You can also try email, although I haven't found much success with that. What I do when I send out a cold DM on LinkedIn, and by the way, sometimes LinkedIn Premium will just give you a month free, and that's what I did when I first started, so definitely take advantage of that if you don't have a lot of money starting out. But I reached out to different people on LinkedIn who I thought were interesting. I researched their profile. I said, hey, it looks like you're doing XYZ, which is really interesting. I'd love to have you on my podcast, and I made it specific. I put paid ad spend behind every episode, so make sure that you're offering them something. Would you like to be on my podcast? Now, the other part of this, I have to say, I was really lucky that my first podcast episode ever actually came from something else that happened in my life. So once you get on one good guest, it's easy to get on more. So I'll tell you this story just because I'm being very vague and I need to be more clear. I went viral because there was a point in my content marketing career where I was on TikTok and I just decided, hey, I want to crack this viral thing on TikTok. I want to do it. So I went viral on TikTok like two times really big, two times over like 5 million views, but more times like over 500K. And there was this one video that I did on a study that Dan Ariely did um, from his like book, Predictably Irrational. And because of that, there was a huge controversy. And I ended up emailing him. We had a relationship on email where we were talking a little bit and I eventually invited him to come onto my podcast. And he said, yes, very luckily. So my first podcast episode, I had a New York Times bestselling author. 
Honestly, I bet you there's someone in your life that you can reach out to who's similar to Dan to get to come onto your first podcast episode. Just take the shot, don't be scared. And from then, it'll be a lot easier to get on other guests when you cold DM them. Okay, so now that you've got your guest on your podcast, especially if this is a business development podcast, you wanna make sure your guest process is seamless, especially if you're hoping that somewhere along the line, this person is going to recommend you for some work or take you up on work themselves. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you send them out full documents with all the questions that you might ask them. And to be honest, this doesn't even have to be perfect because I always just follow the natural flow of the conversation. And I put this in the document, but just them having a rough idea of the type of questions you're gonna ask and then also free, free and then also frequently asked questions will help them just feel more calm and feel more ready for your conversation. So I'm going to put a template of kind of what I send to people in the description bar. It's not fancy, but it is clear. The other thing that you want to do is you want to make scheduling the podcast episode very easy. And the best way that I found to do this, and this is not only for podcast episodes, but this is a pro tip for getting a meeting with anyone, is send them one date and one time that you hope works based on their time zone and your time zone. So basically ask them what time zone they're in and suggest one time. If they can't make it, they're going to suggest another. But oftentimes you're going to be reaching out to really busy people so it's important to not make them think too hard they want to say either yes i can make that filming time or no i can't make that filming time after you book the appointment with them you need to make sure that you send a calendar invite with your riverside link which is the software that i recommend and then you want to just make sure that that's all in the calendar all set and make sure that they got it but having those checks in place will really make sure that it's a streamlined it's a streamlined thing for them and will make you look a lot more put together. The other thing is the day before the podcast and the day of the podcast, you want to send them a reminder if, if you remember. <laughs> Next, what you want to do is focus on the actual filming on the day. You want to make sure that you have your setup. I will link in the description the equipment that I personally use. I've got this mic, honestly. Sometimes I don't even plug it in. It's not plugged in for this video, which well, now that I've told you that, I've ruined the magic. But basically, it makes you look more put together than maybe you actually are. No, I'm quite put together, but the microphone and an iPhone camera is actually pretty good if the house is quiet. So I just have it for a prop sometimes. The other thing that I use, which is my desk over there, sorry, it's kind of messy, is I have this arm thing. It's got a ring light on it, but it's good for lighting, especially if the only time that you can get or the only filming place you can get is somewhere where you need that kind of lighting because you don't have natural lighting. I really actually love that ring light thing. The other thing is this tripod that I'm using and then, which I'll also link in the description, it'll all be on like some Amazon wish list sort of vibe just so everything's easy to find. But you don't actually need too much equipment. You really just need a webcam and a will to start. You'll get better with time and you'll invest more and upgrade more with time. I think when I started, and even sometimes now, all I use is like my laptop because the conversations and the business development is more important to me. But see what works for you and order what's in your budget. Make sure that you're not like blowing your savings on your podcast before you've really taken some time to get good at it. The next thing is when you're filming, obviously you have the Riverside link, so you just jump on, you press record. Something that you really want to make sure of is that both of your sides are 100% uploaded before both parties close off. So ask your guests to wait like five minutes after you press stop recording. What I recommend is just talking to them a few minutes after and that kind of solidifies your relationship as well. So after you've filmed, the next thing that you want to focus on is editing. And that's again where Riverside comes in clutch. I absolutely love Riverside. It's like $15 a month and it pretty much edits the episode for you. Now, sometimes it doesn't always do this perfectly. One time what happened was I was uploading <laughs> both of our feeds like normal, but my feed actually didn't record. So what I had to do is I needed to live react to the other person's stream. So Riverside could... What I did at the time, because I didn't have the editing skills, was I just outsourced it to someone. You can find really great people on Fiverr for like 20 pounds. I lived in the UK at the time, that's why it's in pounds. But just get the video edited. You can either use the AI and then put it into CapCut to make sure that everything's okay if you have basic editing skills or just have someone do it for you on Fiverr for cheap. Either way is cool. 
The other thing that I do in terms of editing is I make these trailers. I'll insert a clip of a trailer here. Mondo Salavanti. Mondo Salavanti. Mondo Salavanti. This guy is the man. And Mondo over here is very wise in the art of finance. There's not many guys that I come across on LinkedIn that are absolutely crushing it just in life and the way that they think and the way that they act and what they're doing. I started playing football when I was 10 years old. I was 20 pounds over the weight limit though. So my dad basically said to me as a 10 year old kid, he's like, look, if you want to play, we got to diet, we got to run, we got to train, we got to start working out. So I'm 10 years old and like, I'm going on this straight up fitness regimen. Like I remember my dad taking me on runs and like quick side lesson in the story is just leadership. Like my dad just ingrained that in me of like, ask people to do things that you will do as well. I just remember looking back to the year past. I, rem I remember sitting in Italy at a dinner and vividly thinking this like, I just went after a goal that was given to me by other people, not a goal that I really wanted for myself. When you go to change your habits, things are gonna be difficult. So when things get difficult, if you don't have any bigger purpose that you're linking the sacrifices you're making in the present to, you're going to quit when times are hard. But I'll do another video on how to make those trailers. I really do think they add something in the first minute of the episode because the first minute of your episode is so, so important to getting people to watch the rest of it. You really need to pique interest here. It's like the hook of your entire video. So spend, I spent like three hours on the first 40 seconds of a video before. It's really, really important to nail down and get right. So after you've edited your video, what you want to do is upload it. Sounds simple, but there are three ways that you can do that. You can do that on audio, on either Buzzsprout or Anchor. I personally use Buzzsprout. I kind of regret it because it, the free version gets rid of your video after 90 days, which is annoying. I don't really, I like to pay for as little things as possible. I will have to upgrade it, which is annoying. The other thing that you can do is upload to YouTube. That's what I like to do the most. That's where I promote my videos the most as well. And I like the video format as well. The Anchor or Buzzsprout are the two that you can use. And they're very intuitive actually. You just need to follow their instructions on how to integrate the feeds and then it'll be on like Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you actually want the podcast to appear. You also need like a one by one thing for your episode. I'll include a sample Canva template for that as well, just so you have it if you're not too much into editing or you don't already have like your logos and stuff like that. And that'll be in the description as well. So the next thing that you need to do after your video is all uploaded and your audio is uploaded as well, is you wanna promote your episode. And again, Riverside coming in clutch. What you can do is they actually have a magic clip feature and I'll insert kind of how to, what that looks like but you click the magic clips and then it auto generates these different clips for you and you can resize them and it picks up the emotional elements of the episode. It's not perfect. And if you don't have really good editing skills, then you might have to rejig it a little bit just to make them shorter or do your best to kind of extend the clips. But overall, especially if you don't have editing skills, it's a really good way to get those initial clips. So. Riverside, getting those clips, posting them before the episode, maybe once a day leading up, maybe like five days before, that's a really good way to do it. I didn't do that for one episode just to see what would happen. It got way less views. So there you go. I definitely do think that it's worth it. And then after your episode is posted as well, something that I always like to do to promote the podcast further is I always go for ice cream. And the reason I do that is not even because I really care about the win. I, I like the work more than I've ever liked a win but it kind of gives other people a chance to celebrate you and those posts always perform well, so it gets the word out about your podcast a little bit more. So go celebrate. If you wanna honor me, go get ice cream or do your own thing, whatever you like, but make sure you take a picture and you post about what you learned in the podcast episode that you think that other people can benefit from, whether it's the content that you learned or the content that you made, like what did you learn in making the episode? Either one of those things can work. The last thing that I want to talk about is paid ads. I mentioned that in my guest cold email, the thing that I gave back to people is that I was like, all right, I know that I have no established reputation, so I will invest, add money into this video just so, you know, the word gets out there a little bit more and they know it's going to get views. So that's what I did for every episode. I still do it for every episode. It's literally not very much, $40. And 
when the episodes are good, they get like 10K views. You can go look. For Dan's video, the first one that I ever did, I hired someone off Fiverr. I wouldn't recommend that. I didn't really like the result that it gave. If you wanna promote your podcast on audio though, that could be a good thing to do, or you could do your own Google ad, but you might mess it up. Honestly, I would just hire someone on Fiverr for promoting the audio for your podcast, but for YouTube, they've made it so easy that just do it yourself. All you have to do is go to the video, press promote, and then choose whether you want it to drive more subscribers to your channel or more views to the video. I will say if your episode is not good, which I said, <laughs> It, if it is good, it's gonna use the ad spend and you will get views. If it's not good, then it's not gonna use the ad spend and you're gonna be like, why isn't it taking my money? They wanna take your money, the episode's not good. It's fine, you'll get better. But that's kind of just how you promote a video. You don't need very much money. Just if you wanna get more views, do it. So that is pretty much the A to Z of posting your first podcast episode. If you have any more questions, you can let me know, but let's go over a quick summary of everything that I just talked about. So first, you want to know why you are creating a podcast in the first place, just so you know how to plan and how to research. So for example, if you are doing it for fun, you need to research your topic a little bit more. If you're doing it with guests, you need to research your guests a little bit more so you know what to ask them. Second thing is you need to know what software to use. You know I like Riverside FM for editing. I use CapCut, I don't think I said that, but I do use CapCut. And then I use Canva for a lot of graphics as well. So then what you wanna do is you want to reach out to guests, either warm guests who you already know or cold outreach. Cold outreach, make sure that you're offering them something. The best places where I like to reach out to people are either on Instagram threads or LinkedIn premium. The next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have really seamless communications with your guests. You want to send them their document, you want to schedule appropriately, and you want to remind them before the episode is going to premiere. Then when you're filming, you want to come on Riverside, you want to make sure that the video on both sides are 100% uploaded before you cut off the call or else you will miss part of, part of the episode. Next, you want to edit your video and you can do this either using Fiverr or the AI in Riverside. If you use the AI in Riverside, just check to make sure it's all okay. If it's not and you do have basic editing skills, then go into CapCut and just make those little tweaks that you need to make. I'd also recommend doing a trailer. And again, I will upload a tutorial on how to do that, but it's kind of a long process. So I'm gonna make a separate video on it. Next, you want to upload your video on either YouTube if you want to do audio, if you want to do video, Buzzsprout or Anchor. If you want to do audio, you can choose one of those two. They pretty much do the same thing. And then the last thing that you want to do, or second to last thing, you want to upload your social clips and you can do that by generating them magic clips on Riverside. So the second to last thing you want to do is you want to create magic clips and you can do this on Riverside. It auto generates them for you. Hopefully you're able to do some edits on that and make sure that's engaging for the video and that there's a storytelling element. But if you just have basic editing skills, this is still a great tool for you to start. Try to upload like once a day or once every other day about a week leading up to the episode. After the episode premieres, go celebrate, take a photo, write about what you learn, and let people celebrate that win with you. Those posts always do really well. And last but not least, if you want to do paid ads on video, do it yourself. YouTube ads are super easy. If you want to do paid ads on audio, I'd recommend hiring someone out on Fiverr. Or if you are good at Google ads, do that yourself as well. I normally put around 40 pounds $40, <laughs> sorry, I'm still in UK, $40 of ad spend behind every single video. I hope that that helps you. I hope you feel more confident going into posting your first podcast episode. As always, feel free to leave me comments, message me. I'm happy to answer any questions. And for those of you, as just so you know, I have a course as well where this video is part of the course. For those of you in the course, you will have faster access to me. So feel free to message me anything that you want about podcasts and we'll talk about it in the group call as well. But I hope you have a great day and I shall see you for the next video. Make sure that you follow me, subscribe, whatever YouTube is, if you would like more content marketing education. Cheers.